Hello, and welcome back to another political video, or possibly just a normal interview. This will be a short, possibly five to ten minute video. Uh, we're only here to ask some questions that are made by the people that view this channel and subscribe. Most of them being fans of the current person here. His name is Coyote. May you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Coyote Lovely. I make commentary videos on YouTube. Mostly it's talking about and exposing people in the furry fandom who are into either zoophilia, pedophilia, necrophilia, or a combination of those things. Uh, for the most part, uh, my goal is to essentially make ensure public awareness of people, you know, who could be in a position like where they would prey on people in the fandom. That's kind of what I make this content about. Uh, for example, there was the Hypnotist Sappho video where, you know, she turns out to be uh, not only a zoophile, but also uses uh, hypnosis to do some very, very shady shit to people who trust her when they're in a position of being, you know, vulnerable, as well as people like um, Growly, people like, um, you know, I, off the top of my head, uh, there's Draconator as well that happened in 2019. That was more of a Warrior Cats thing, but I think you get the gist off of that. All right, and straight into the point, we have five questions which were voted on by all of the people who suggested them to me. Question one, uh, being a part of the debated video which you made, what did you think before making the video on the current zoo file which you were talking about? Uh, do you mean Hypnotist Sappho or? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did I think about them? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I just I want to make sure I've. What did you think before making the video on Sappho? Before making the video, I had seen the, um, I had seen her, you know, coming out about things video. Um, I just had a lot of, my thoughts were like, okay, this is really, really disingenuous the way she's framing all this shit. She's, you know, you know, trying to prime the audience, make people think that, oh, being a zoophile is no different than being gay, which is a pretty, pretty big difference between those things. Um, and it, you know, initially just led to a stream that I thought was going to be a one and done kind of thing. It was like, hey, look at this bitch; she's fucking disgusting. Let's let's all you know talk about this for like an hour or so. Um, uh, I honestly didn't expect there was going to be a follow up video until she had contacted me before that stream, and um, that's when I was just like, okay, there's probably going to be a follow up beyond what I'm seeing here. And then more stuff kind of piled on, and I was just like, okay, well, we gotta. Looks like we got a we got a full story on our hands, and now that's at 100k views, and that that really blew up. And there's even more to the story now. That's actually going to be my next video, uh, another another follow up on her. So, All right. Uh, but basically, just to, the long and short of it is that uh, my opinion of her went from negative to exceedingly negative to holy shit, how does a person like you exist? <laughs> yeah, I can grip to that. All right, question two. What made you start your career? This was asked by one of my personal friends who are a big fan of you. Oh man, um, that's an interesting one. I actually get asked that question a lot. Um, so initially when I was creating YouTube videos, I was just kind of talking about whatever I really wanted to back when I had like, I want to say less than 50 subscribers. Like it was like your, it wasn't, you, I, I wouldn't even say typical gameplay commentary because like that would, that's an insult to gameplay commentary somehow. Uh, I didn't use regular gameplay for the most part. I used mobile gameplay. It was actually kind of cringe. It really was. My editing was absolutely awful. It was atrocious. Um, my jokes, they were whatever. They weren't really all that entertaining. It was, it was really bad content. Um, but, you know, I was happy making it. And then around 2018, like, none of these videos are available anymore. They, they don't exist. I scrubbed them off my channel. Um, but then around 2018, uh, near the end, I think all of us know what happened then. You know, Caro the Wolf and the Zoo Sadist Leagues happened. And uh, I, a lot of people were paying attention to that. And I kind of was at the impression of, like, I, I hadn't considered something like that existed in the fandom. I, I really hadn't. It, it's... Looking back at it now, it's difficult to think that I was ever of that mindset that, oh, this could never be a thing, uh, especially, you know, having done all the shit that I have for years since. But it's like back then I was like this, that that could never happen. That could never be a thing. And then once I found out about it, I was just like, you know what? I don't I don't want to think about this. I don't want to look at this. I, I just don't want to deal with it. 
I wound up, I remember being in a call with one of my friends who was also a YouTuber. He brought in two of his other friends who were much bigger YouTubers. One of them was uh, Question Turkey. Uh, Question Turkey asks me, you know, as as a furry, what my stance on, um, on, on the Care of the Wolf situation was. And I explained that well, I don't really. It's it's. I'm not. I'm not involved in this. It's it's not my drama. I don't want to deal with it. I want to think about it. I don't really have an opinion. And uh, I remember that question. Turkey asked me, "How can you be of that stance? This is your fandom. This affects you and everyone in your fandom. And he's creating victims off of what he's doing. You you can't just ignore this. If you ignore it, then well, that makes you complicit in it continuing. And I remember after that conversation, I went for a walk. You know, I had a smoke, went for a walk, and I came to the conclusion that it was just like, she's right. She's absolutely right. If I if I know something bad is happening and I decide not to do anything about it, then if it keeps happening on some level, there's an account there's accountability on some level on me. Because I could have done something, but I made a choice not to do it. So what I wound up doing was making sort of a really short uh, kind of unscripted rant about Carol the Wolf, and that wound up getting about a thousand views and putting my channel from like 50 subscribers to about a hundred. Um, that one is also no longer available on my channel either, but um, it was that's kind of where things started, and then I kind of kept going with that direction. Um, cause I kept seeing more and more of this stuff pop up as so I started getting involved with more and more YouTubers who. Uh, who were looking into stuff like this as well, like a friend of mine, Lyle Convoy, he uh, looks into allegations of predators in the in the Brony community as well as other communities like it. Um, other YouTubers as well that, you know, I met along the way, some of whom I'm still friends with, some that I'm not. Um, and that's kind of kind of just the way things kind of evolved. You know, it, it, it was just one of a very poignant conversation that made me see things in a different way and it just sort of set me on a path that led me to exactly where i'm sitting right now right question three this one's going to be an odd one but it's not going to be as odd as the final one do you consider scalies not a part of the furry fandom because there seems to be a uh, a rise of the sub fandom me being one of them <laughs> who consider scalies not a part of the fandom. What's your opinion on said uh, incursion? I think that's a really weird distinction to start making because uh, then it's a, at that point you got to start asking the question of like, if you don't consider scalies to be part of the furry fandom, then what about real people with bird personas? Are, are they not part of it because they're avians? And at that point, it's just, it's these really weird kind of, I think these distinctions are kind of strange. I feel like they're just dividing us more in ways that are kind of unnecessary. If someone has a scaly persona and they want to identify as part of the furry fandom, cool, whatever, do you. Uh, if they don't, if they want to be something completely different, that's cool too. Uh, I really think it's up to, uh, you know, up to the person who has the persona and what they feel like they do or do not identify as. That's either way, it's fine with me. As long as you don't identify as a zoo file or anything like that, I'm totally cool with it. Right, fourth question. This one's a relatively normal one. Uh, I usually ask this for multiple people. What's your opinion on world politics at this moment? Uh, you know, I think <laughs> that's a dangerous topic, isn't it? Um, indeed, it is. I think, I think the easiest way to describe this is kind of in the same the same words that i that gerard way once used which is that the world is a fucked up place that just doesn't want to be saved and it's gonna punch you in the face if you fucking try that's really it i mean i i don't know how else to really approach this one without pissing somebody off and honestly i think that's probably the truest sentiment about politics and stuff like that in the world all right simple answer good enough Last question before we end off the video. What is your opinion on maps, aka minor attracted persons? I consider them to be just as bad, and in a lot of cases, if not, uh, you know, a lot of cases worse than zoo files. Um, I don't consider them valid at all. I do not in any way, shape, or form think that it is something that should be accepted or normalized, and frankly, uh, they should be getting therapy. If they're not getting therapy, they should be getting therapy. They shouldn't be on social media trying to advocate for it being normalized. I don't agree with that in any way, shape, or form. 
Um, and honestly, the idea that they are on Twitter where they can actually have direct contact with people as young as 13 terrifies the shit out of me. It's one of the reasons why I genuinely believe platforms like Twitter, like TikTok, like places with direct messaging abilities like that, like Instagram as well. I think they should be 18 plus websites just off of that to make sure children are fucking safe. Um, and I know that that's a real Karen stance. I know people are going to say that, but I, I stand by that. I, I would rather, even if it, even if my own numbers took a hit and people couldn't see my content as much, I had less subscribers, less Twitter followers. I don't give a fuck. As long as children are safe and not in a position where they could actually be preyed upon by people like that, I would be happier. I'd sleep better. All right. This one is an extra question something i apparently have not planned and i somehow added into the notepad um why do you have black hair human hair as a uh fursona even though the fursona has all fur this one's not made by me <laughs> <laughs> okay um that one honestly the character initially did not have any like hair on his head um the, the character's gone through over the years a lot of changes and a lot of it has to do with how artists have decided to portray the character over time some of the things i decided to keep some of them i did not um initially the character was entirely gray uh he only had one ear he still had his you know you know clockwork arm but uh, then one artist that uh, created a created a piece that cost like 60 bucks as a commission uh, gave him some hair and it was like a deeper shade of gray and I really really liked it I thought that was it was a really cool stylistic thing that they did with it and I decided to keep that um, and then you know eventually he started getting different color patterns from artists and I was like oh that's really cool and I wound up keeping like the the white underbelly and like at the bottom of the tail the white and then uh, the gray on the rest of the fur and I was like I like that a lot um, and then eventually somebody decided to make the hair, they decided to make it black, and I was like, I like that a lot. Um, so that's kind of how the evolution of the character went. It's entirely based on how the artists have decided to portray him and what I decided to keep uh, as, as that has happened. All right. Well, that was everything. I just want to thank you for accepting this interview, as stuff like this is rare, especially with a small channel like mine uh i'd also like oh, yeah, to say no. i'd also like to say to the viewers watching make sure to join the uh discord server of his it will be linked down into the bio as well as his channel and would you like to say the final goodbyes before end this video uh sure and honestly i actually love doing you know content with a lot smaller creators as well i remember like it wasn't that long ago that i was a really small creator with like nobody helping me out so it, it always i remember i did get a shout out at one point from a much larger youtuber that gave me a lot of traction and that's so remembering that kind of stuff it kind of made me put me in the position where i'm like i love the idea of being able to help out smaller channels and smaller creators so i'm actually really glad that you asked me to do this interview and honestly if you uh send me a dm and like link it to me i would be glad to shout it out on my community tab as well once you uh once you finish it yep. um but as far as saying to the viewers uh i hope you you know got satisfying answers to the uh to whatever questions that you may have asked and i hope that you enjoyed this interview all right and i'm glad to be a part of it all right thank you all for watching uh please leave a like and subscribe do not leave any hate comments and have a nice day or night wherever you are. Uh, crap, what was the call sign? Karoa kia koe, karoa kia koe ingoa.